our uh, reservation tonight at Le Petit Chef. That is so something that Corey wanted to do. Yes. yes. Very important for us to do. So. You know, we get a lot of our ideas from other videos from yes. the people who put out on these ships. And Le Petit Chef was one that I thought looked really cool. And being and really a former do that, animation so. student, like, that yeah. is just my jam. I'm going to do some animation for our channel. Me? Yeah. Oh, I, I changed to graphic design. <laughs> okay. All right. Two menus. You've got the original, or the, this one. the lower menu, I think it's, or in history, no, let's see. Le menu extraordinaire that uh, goes along with the animation. And then they have the other menu on the back that uh, gives you some different options. So, so since we're, gonna we're get here, one of each. Uh, we're going to get one of each and we'll share between the plates and make it work. Yeah. Because and you're there's some stuff that she doesn't like and some stuff that I don't like, but we'll figure it out. And we did the food and, and the uh, food and wine pairing. Wine pairing. Yes. So we'll see. An extra uh, $25. Yeah, extra $25 per person, but hey, buy a couple of glasses here. of wine and you're going to spend yeah, that anyway. That's so. why we're here. This is a, a special little indulgence yes. tonight. So. And for the record, we don't know how much this cost. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I don't know. How much it costs? Yeah. Mm. We'll let you know. We don't know. We're just. We're yeah, we'll have to look it up in the app because I'm not sure how much uh, this yeah. meal costs per person. It's got a really nice nose. Uh, it smells like it's going to be very light and crisp in taste, so we're going to find out. It's a, it's a white wine, so. Yeah. Exactly what it is. It's very light, doesn't have a huge taste. It's not sweet and it's not tart. It's very easy drinking. The drive-by. <laughs> yeah. It is very light, tart, reminiscent of like green, unripe, unripe grapes, but... Really? Yeah. I didn't get tart. Oh yeah, it's definitely tart. A little bit of spice on there. Well, I drank some red wine before we came here. <laughs> yeah, the red wine could affect that, so, for sure. A little tart, a little bit of a, a, a tingly, spicy note, but... That's nice. Cheers to a new experience. Yeah. And to you. You for your support good. and your thumbs up. We appreciate it. <laughs> That's for Waverly. <laughs> Allow me to welcome you to How to Become the World's Greatest Celebrity Chef, created by Skull Mapping. It's your fault, so as not to disturb the other guests. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you, all the way from France, measuring six centimeters, the world's smallest chef, Le Petit Chef. In order to become a master chef, you have to study the traditions and understand where food comes from. Let's take something simple and common as the tomato. Tomatoes don't come from Italy. No. The first tomatoes came from what today is known as Peru. From there, they eventually expanded to Mexico, where they were cultivated by the Aztecs. The Aztecs grew 
tomatoes on chinampas, which were floating gardens around their capital city Tenochtitlan. In the 16th century, the Spanish conquistador Don Hernán Cortés arrived in the New World. Diaz the king had not believed Cortés was the returning Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god and destroyed this beautiful Aztec city. When they sailed back to Europe, Cortes took tomatoes into wedding to feel aristocracy. But they got sick from eating tomatoes and even dropped dead. Snow White, right? Uh, turns out it was because the rich were eating of silvery fruit to plates. And the tomatoes, which are high in acidity, dissolved part of the left from the plate. And so when they ate tomatoes, they got <laughs> left poisoning. Oh, that's why you don't like tomatoes. <laughs> Rats, the tomato sauce. Right. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the salmon yet again was a fail for me. But I tried the tomato dish and it wasn't too bad. And I don't really like raw tomatoes or whole tomatoes. Anything. Delicious. Yeah. The food so far on Celebrity has been awesome. Yeah, everything, all the food that we had has been good. Very well done, and spice well, and different and unique. And different, yes. Lot they put lots of stuff together to create a wonderful, like incredible I, not menu. Palette, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just lovely. Thank you. And this is Ronnie over here. Oh, something new. <laughs> hey, Ronnie. Hey, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't eat raw tomatoes. I'll eat salsa, tomatoes and salsa. I'll eat marinara sauce or pizza sauce or something like that. He ate those tomatoes. I actually uh, asked I for that dish. The tomatoes. It was so good. I, the calamel olives provided the like the salty taste yeah. with that. And, and that kind of pickled thing that and made me really think. And, and, and whatever herbs they used with, that they stewed those tomatoes with was uh, well, I'm sure it was oregano, very good, yeah. parsley. I mean, I'm guessing, but it had an Italian kind of kind of seasoning to it. It was it was delicious. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. We keep seeing the movement on the table, and it freaks me out. <laughs> I'm there's a bug or something crawling on the table. <laughs> <laughs> composition, colors, and texture to evoke emotion. I consider the plate as if it is a blank canvas. I usually start with sketching my ideas. I even think it's important to think about the color of the table itself. Uh, the trois. <laughs> I remember story when night. I started cooking, I was really inspired by the Dutch painter Van Gogh. Oh, look at that, so neat and tidy. My mother would be proud. <laughs> But after some time, I got so bored of all this rigid perfection, and I wanted to let go of all control and the action paint of the of follow.
my customer said that my food became way too arty party and nobody came anymore to my restaurant. So then I told myself I need to stop trying to reinvent dining and just go back to the basics of plating. Texture, color and composition. Let me present to you tonight's dish, inspired by the great Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky. Just like an artist, I want people's mouth to fall open when they see the dish placed in front of them. And I hope the, uh, I can see it once again Is there another wine for this course? Yes. I love cucumbers, and that looks like, I don't know, I'd rather eat that because it looks like I know it better than this. But I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to try it. <laughs> I just want to say that I'm really proud of Corey for going outside of his comfort zone and outside of his box and trying stuff. Like, he ate tomatoes and he got a beet dish. He doesn't like beets at all. But he got it. Well, it's because it was either it cucumbers. Like dirt. <laughs> it was either cucumbers or beets. He went for the beets. And he didn't eat them. <laughs> but he ate everything else that went with it. So, yes, I'm very proud of you for trying different things. Thumbs up to that. Now, admittedly, we saw the menu for this place online before we ever booked it. I didn't see the menu. You didn't see the menu? No. Well, I saw the menu. Well, I didn't care. And I knew that was. most of the stuff that was on the menu, I wasn't going to care for. And I was, I was doing it for the experience. Because it looks cool. So, my own fault. Our second wine, Pinot Grigio. Oh yeah. I have to tell you. Since we get, get wine. wine. <laughs> what? I'm starting to get drunk on the wine. <laughs> Second glass of wine, yes. Uh, I guess you get a glass for these course. Which for 25 bucks is not a bad deal. Considering most of your wines are costing twelve oh, thirty bucks. Oh, there's our second, there's a, yeah. Oh, there comes the third glass of wine. <laughs> Alright, let's just stop. Alright, I guess we need to finish the second glass. <laughs> this is Corey's. This is Lori's. <laughs> He's like, oh, there's another wine coming. I gotta finish this one. Oh, well, there's this now. So <laughs> this tastes more, like grapefruit, right? That more kind of practically an empty stomach here. So oh, it smells like grapefruit. Is that why you liked it? That's why I can't drink it. I mean, it's it, it paired well with it. Did. It's great. A little of that Porsche I ate. No worries, I'll probably drink Her it. Shrimp or, or good. Yeah, shrimp were good. Shrimp? Your shrimp were good. That's why I shared it with you, honey. Because he didn't want uh, the beets. He <laughs> didn't want the beets. We could skip the cu cucumbers. I ate all the cucumbers, too. But pick little snacks out here and there. If you guys haven't noticed in the videos that you've watched of ours, he's the one that's always poo-poo on the food. Mr. Complex Taste Buds. Well, I like the complex tastes. I know. And I he, just, there's certain tastes I don't care for. He is still going outside of his box, but he's so simplistic, even though he's got complex tastes. I tried tastes. everything. You did, and I'm very proud of you for I trying I even tried the beets. <laughs> they taste like dirt. <laughs> he tasted the orange ones. The red ones were sweeter I taste and better. the red ones. The red ones taste like dirt, too. <laughs> Stepped outside the box. You did, and I'm very proud of you for doing I, that. I probably haven't willingly tried a beet since I was a kid. My mom used to love pickled beets, <laughs> and I tried them, and they tasted like dirt, so I never ate them again. And apparently, my grandmother used to tell me that my brother and I used to fight over the beets <laughs> when we were kids. <laughs> wow. I guess we like dirt. I guess so. <laughs> Tastes like dirt to me. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, on to the next course. Next course should be here soon. They've given us the one. Oh, here it is. Here it goes.
Delicious. Is it? Yes. And I said, do you want to split half? Well, sure. <laughs> okay. I'll give you half of my Look crispy branzino. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. It's nice. Oh, wait, there's more. Jeff's table. When we tried Bronzino for the first time. Yeah. I tell you, this short rib made made up for everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is some good stuff. The Bronzino is very good too. I have not tasted the Bronzino yet. It's a wonderful white it's a wonderful white fish. Yeah, we have it. Tasty. First time on the chef's table and on Freedom. Oh, there you go. How are you enjoying it? Very good. Thank you. Very good. Very good, yes. The skin is crispy and just delightful. Yeah. I don't think it's quite as good as as the Brantino we had on, on Freedom at the Chef's Table. No, that was a chef's dinner. That was like exquisite. But has a really nice flavor. Bronzino is a white fish and it's very flaky and it's just it, it's a it's a very light flaky fish. And if I remember correctly, Bronzino is a Chilean sea bass. They call it, it doesn't taste the same as that. Sea bass is more oily and dense. Okay. I think it's the in, same fish. In my opinion. If you know, put it down in the comments. Yes, please. Yeah. But I hadn't seen the peas before, so that's a little different. I had asparagus, but yeah, the uh, both of these meals were just, the entrees were outstanding. Very, very good. This cream sauce that came with the brand Zeno paired really well with it. I haven't even had the wine, but I had the wine beforehand and it was delicious. So I haven't paired it with the food. I'm sure it's good though. Yeah? Well, let me try it with the, Here, let's with the try short it. rib because that's what it's actually meat. paired with. Right. So. Let's see. Here's my short rib. A little bit of peas and mushrooms. Oh yeah. There's something about the uh, what are the spices that, that they use in the short ribs that just really ricochets off of the, uh, the spice notes in that line for sure. That's a very good pairing. 
Everything was very good. Thumbs up on the entree for sure. Mm -hmm. And thumbs up on the pairing of the wine. That was really good. Become a chef, become a chef, become a pro, and now, chef, as a chef, you need to come up with new dishes, just make sure they are delicious and super delicious, so your guests are overwhelmed with all the flavors, flavors they call excellent, but keep your business to play, the meat is overcooked, you'll end up washing dishes, come on. Sometimes it can get lonely when the critics eat you up. When your soup is boiling over and you are stressed out all night. In that case, don't be too astounded when they burn your food to the ground. But just because there was an air in the soup, doesn't mean when the world was good. That's how you learn to be a chef. Luckily, I can cook better than I can sing. Strawberry for you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I think we're going to have to switch desserts. Huh? We're going to have to switch. What are you doing? Oh, that was supposed God. to be my dessert. Now you're tearing it to pieces. I know. I wanted to try it. <laughs> Pretty massacred. Once you stole from me. No. Wow. That Moscato that they paired with dessert was really, really different. Very different from any Moscato I've had before. Ooh. Paired really, really well with it. This strawberry whipped cream thing that they gave us. Goes well with the chocolate too. And with the chocolate. Mesdames et messieurs, after intensive deliberations, the jury has come to a conclusion. It is my honor to inform you that you have graduated from Lancashire University with great distinction. Let me present to you your official degree. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Going forward, you can now call yourself a super chef. As with any degree, it's just a piece of paper with no use whatsoever in the real world. But it does look nice once framed and put on the wall of your office. Petit chef for president! Ah, the chef for president. We hope you have enjoyed the petit chef's dining. Thank you. You are a super chef, sir. Super chef. Oh. Well, I am a super chef. I can cook a few things. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Definitely yeah. a must do. That was uh, definitely worth the experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on how picky you are as an eater. Which you are. It may not be for you, but. The dishes that were stuff that I would eat were very, very good, so. Yes. The short ribs were outstanding. The branzino was outstanding. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the entrees and the desserts were great. And the yeah. wine was... The wine, wine yeah, good. especially that uh, Moscato pairing uh, was just He doesn't bad. even like sweet wines, but he liked um, the Moscato. Probably drink sweet wines, but I mean, when you absolutely nail a food and beverage pairing, there's just nothing like it. Whether it's wine or beer or whatever, yeah, doesn't matter. If you nail that pairing, it, it just kind of blows your mind. Yeah. And this was one of those type of pairings. So yeah. It was very, very good. So I'm giving him all the wine. 
Yeah. So now I gotta uh, catch up. Finish off Lori's uh, Pinot Grigio backwash and Moscato. But I've got I've got the red zin. I gave her the me. rest of my red zin. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you see that? <laughs> I tell you, we have had more messages <laughs> in the 36 hours we've been on board this ship than any other time, any other ship that we've been on. And most of it's been advertising, trying to sell us something. Celebrity, if you're listening, it gets annoying. Whew. That was an incredible day. Lots of great food at uh, the Petite Chef. Uh, Laurie stepped out. I'm not sure where she went, but I uh, did want to say thank you guys for watching to this point. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the thumbs up and uh, give us a subscribe. If you enjoy the stuff that we're doing, hit the subscribe button and we will continue to bring you awesome content of the cruises that we take. Thanks again, and from Peaks and Pines, we'll see you next time.